All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you another method on compositing green screen footage inside Unreal Engine 4. Now, if you haven't seen my last two methods, go ahead and check them out first because this method is actually a little bit different. Now, 4.25 Unreal Engine 4 update added this plugin called Composite Plane. Another YouTuber, Greg Corson, told me about this uh, plugin, but there's actually not a lot of documentations about it. So, all I did was I went ahead and looked for that plugin inside Unreal Engine 4 and see if I can make it work. So, just a disclaimer, what I'm about to show you will work, but without the proper documentation, I am not sure if this is how I'm supposed to be using this plugin. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be creating a new uh, template here. So just do blank, click next, blueprint. All of this by default is fine. We're gonna title it tutorial three and then create a project. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is download the same exact environment we used for my second tutorial. So let's go ahead and open up the launcher here. So let's go ahead and go to the HQ Retro Farmhouse, add to project, scroll down, tutorial three, add to project. Let's go back to Unreal Engine, click on the little farmhouse, maps, demo map, and that should load it up. So the first method I did was kinda like a lot of backdooring to get something done. And I really liked that method because I was able to place the green screen footage inside the Unreal Engine 4 in 3D space. Now the second method I used composure. Now the problem with composure is it's stuck in 2D space, meaning I can't put the green screen in the middle of the scene. It's just always in front of you. This third method, what I'm about to show you is similar to my first one. We should be able to put the green screen footage anywhere we want in the environment. So let's go ahead and enable it. You go to edit, plugins, let's enable it. Click built in, type in compose, compose it plain. You're gonna see it's beta 1.0 enabled, yes. And then we're gonna do uh, ProRes as well because I found out that I was getting interlaced footage because I was exporting in AVI in my tutorials but whenever I do short films like the blueprint I actually export in ProRes it takes a lot more space but it's a lot higher in quality so let's go ahead and restart all right so now that we're in the demo map um, in our second tutorial we put myself right there which is okay but for this tutorial we're gonna put my face or myself in this little dining table. I'm gonna rotate this little chair and I'm gonna pull it back as far as I can. Right here is okay. Rotate it a little bit more. I'm gonna take away the snap tool here for the snap size. Oh, it's still snapping like that, but it's okay. I'm gonna just use this instead. All right, I'm gonna move it to the left a little bit and I'm just gonna, you know, put it in the middle of this little hallway right here in front of this door all right so that's what we're gonna have the chair all right the next thing we're gonna do is drag a plane so similar to my first tutorial we are gonna need a plane for this thing to work so bring it up rotate it 90 degrees and then face it 90 degrees and then on the right side we're gonna scale it we're gonna scale the y to 1.78 because that is actually the aspect ratio of my footage. So depending on your shot or your uh, footage, it that's gonna pretty much determine what you need to put in there. But basically you don't want it skewed like my first test uh, when messing around with this. So make sure you have the right aspect ratio, which this looks pretty right. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just go back all the way back and we're gonna create a folder. New folder, footage. Now, like I said previously, Unreal Engine 4 likes image sequences. I like to use PNG image sequences when I am doing anything with Unreal Engine 4. So let's go ahead and right click Media, Image Media Source. I'm going to leave the default name, double click, click the three dots, find your green screen footage, click this Show Advanced. We're going to change this to 24 frames per second. Save, close. Next thing we're going to create is a media, player, media, media player. Make sure you click video output texture. Okay. I'm going to leave that as default as well. Click on the TV, click your footage, click over here, and then loop. 
save, minimize, and then close. All right. So as you can see right there, that that's already applied to that media texture. So basically we have the file, a TV, and then the texture for the TV. Next thing we're going to do is go back to the top left corner. We're going to put type camera and we're going to drag the BP cinema camera project into the scene, move it up. If you can't see the camera, scroll down in the details tab and it should be, see here. Mm, there's something about the mesh. Oh, where's the mesh, mesh, mesh. Let's click on this mesh right there. Now we see the camera. We're going to press E. We're going to rotate it so that it's facing the plane. And then we're going to move it back. All right. So we're working in 3D space here. We're going to move it back. Move it back. Then move it up. So it's kind of like in the middle of the, uh, the camera there. All right. So if we go... Click perspective, BP cinema camera. That's what our camera is seeing. I like those little shadows that's falling onto that plane. Let's go ahead and get out of that cinematic view viewport. Now, something to remember, if you're trying to move this plane, don't move it inside the camera. It's gonna screw it up. Go to the default viewport and then move your plane if you want, all right? And if you can absolutely help it, move your plane first wherever you want it and then Put the green screen footage in it so um let's go ahead and do that right now so the next thing we need to do is click our camera here or if you go to the world outliner it's going to be the cinema camera project scroll all the way to the middle you're going to see this projection we're going to click the plus sign we're going to put the plane here p-l-a-n-e click that you're going to see that there and then the texture You've guessed it. We're going to click this texture right here. So new media player, video texture, and voila. Just like that, without doing any blueprints, we added the footage inside the plane with no problems. And as you can see that my head is cut off. And I think this is because this is a beta, one, a beta version. So let's go ahead and move that up slightly if you want. Go to the camera. And as you can see there that that's kind of fixed. But if you want, mess around with this. So I'm going to leave it down a little bit or up, depending on how big you want that person in your scene. So we'll go ahead and default viewport. So you can see I can move around just like so. I can move this around if I want, just like that. Now, this is the reason why I told you to move your plane first before you add the textures because that happens. You see, that's kind of like sliding around, up and down. So let's go ahead and control Z. If you want to change that, go ahead and unhinge the media player view, move it, and then just put the footage back on it. Now, I'm not sure if that is actually like a bug or something like that, but that's what how I'm pretty much fixing this problem right now. Go back to the media player, and now we should be able to see the person inside. Now, I can adjust my camera up and down so I can kind of see him a little bit just like so and then we can go ahead and focus this person as well if you go to the camera view I'm sorry the camera so cam boom we're going to change the tr uh, if you want tracking like a focus puller click on focus method tracking and then twirl this down this uh, little eyedropper the person and it's always going to be in uh, focus all right, if you press play, you're going to see that there's nothing there. Well, you probably know what we're about to do if you've followed my previous tutorials. Now we're going to open our level blueprint. Click on here, open level blueprint. And then I'm going to go delete this. Let's just delete it all so we can create it from scratch. The first thing we're going to do is create a variable, add a variable. We're going to call this media. All right. On the right side of that, we're going to create a media player right here object reference and then we're going to compile and you're going to see a drop down here that we just created choose the media player or the tv compile right here we're going to right click event begin play just like so and then we're going to drag our media say get right we're going to drag this little twirly swirly thing to the empty space open source we're going to click the drop down, new media source. We're going to click the media. The TV's good. 
we're going to drag the event plate to this white little triangle diamond whatever that is compile save and now if we press play voila now that green screen is now playing now it is very important that you see the green screen footage inside of when you press play because when rendering in sequencer it has to work like this first okay so press stop all right and as you can see the bug right there with image sequence all you have to do is open a tv open the source again and then minimize and you should be good to go now i'm going to go ahead and move the camera around and that's kind of what's cool about it is i can have camera movements and that person right there will stay put because they're actually inside the plane and like i said the tracking for the focus is automatic which is absolutely cool so let's fix this problem here with this uh green screen here just like that um you can also change the camera settings here if you want to change the uh you know like the focal length and stuff like that for your camera do like a maybe like a 50 or something like that if you want that um let's see let's go to our cinematic viewport so you can see that i've kind of shrunk a little bit now it kind of helps if you know the lens that you shot it in so you can kind of match it in a way but you know that yeah do that in preparation which is kind of smart if you do it that way because you're matching your lens to your um to your cg camera as well okay so let's go ahead and start keying these things and this is this is actually man this is just what makes this thing so easy this method if i scroll down here you're gonna see in the projection there's actually a keyer built in now it's not the best keyer in the world but in this situation here for a very fast key in Unreal Engine 4, it works fantastic. So click the little green button, eyedropper, click the green, awesome, press OK. Go back to the camera because by you clicking that, it actually click the plane. Go back to your camera and then change the rendering mode to masked, change this to keyer, and it's done. You can use translucent if you want. But I like mask better because it actually renders shadow. But again, there was not a documentation on this. This is just how I got it to work. A limitation with this method is I am not familiar with how I can actually color correct this plane or this image by itself. But what I'm going to show you right now is how I can at least change the brightness of this scene. Because as you can see, I when I lit this green screen here this was not the background i had in mind i'm just using this because i already had it lying around so with that being said you can tweak these around if you want to get a better key but right now and if you want though you see that i kind of choke those blue a little bit but let's just leave it to like negative one but um if you want to change the brightness of this thing we are going to have to do that in the uh, post-processing volume um, if I go to where, man, everything is just trolled out. It's just crazy. Let's go type exposure. How about that? Okay. Oh, all right. So yeah, it looks like it works. I'm going to go with manual and that's going to turn the entire thing black. Now what's cool about doing it in camera, I didn't know it was going to work at first, is if I go to my default viewport, everything is okay. The camera pretty much is, you're just, you're just adjusting the camera settings. So let's go back to our camera and then what we're going to do is just slightly turn that brightness up just like that and there you go now if you want to add lights in the background you can also do that if you think that's a little bit too contrasty you can just add a point light back there and as you can see it's good to go and this is not a lighting tutorial but i'm just showing you it can be done so we're not going to stop here because you know this is how we do we're going to go all the way from the beginning to the end so what do we do with this now well we can go ahead and render it in sequencer all right and it's really easy i'm gonna press g so i can get rid of those annoying things if i go to cinematics add level sequence i'm going to create a new sequence all right change the frames per second to 24 frames per second we are now going to grab the track actor sequence and then we're going to go with the camera c-a-m oh c-a-m come on bp cinema and there it is voila dunsky now our footage is in there all you have to do now is render this movie 
Now, we downloaded the ProRes because, like I said, I had interlacing problems when I rendered an AVI in my previous tutorials. So, ProRes encoder, 4K resolution, 444 is okay, progressive encoding mode, all right? And then I'm going to do 32 here because I have 16 cores, 32 threads, so it should be a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and choose my green screen folder, go to animation, and I'm just going to, you know, render maybe... 120 frames and press capture let's go save all right the capture is finished let's go to davinci resolve and open up that file that we just captured so it should be on your green screen and it should be right here demo map so you can see oh my god what is wrong with that face there is no interlacing problem and this is in 4k resolution prores 444 and that is probably, again, another thing that I like about this method is it is very fast. It's amazing. I don't get a lot of stuttering. I don't get a lot of nastiness. Um, the lighting could have been better. I shouldn't have used a daylight balance. So that's just all on me. But like I said, I didn't have this background in mind when I shot this green screen footage. That is all I got for you guys today. I hope you learned something new once again. If you have not supported my short film, the CGI short film I made, from or with Unreal Engine 4, go ahead and check out the links in the comments below. Please do vote if you want to support me. I would absolutely appreciate it. If you guys want more tutorial videos uh, or any videos in the future, go ahead and like this video and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.